Hey now, hey, your divas are back. I hope you guys are just as excited as we are. We're coming to you with a brand new episode 2019. <laughs> Today we are going to talk about a lot. We're going to talk about Cardi B versus Tommy Loren. Mm. We're going to talk about Russell uh, Wilson yes. and future being better. Mm. And we're also going to tackle surviving R. Kelly and the yeah. drama behind that. So make sure you guys stay tuned. I am your host, Sofab Kim, and I am the precious one. And you are officially in the Divas Inn. Welcome back to In the Divas Den. We're glad to have you here. I don't know if you've seen the news lately, but everyone is talking about this government shutdown, mm -hmm. including rapper, hip hop star Cardi B. Now, some may say she's not the most, most eloquent in words and how she expresses herself, but you know, if you look at the clip, she got her point across pretty well. Take that a part. look. <laughs> hey, y'all. I just want to remind y'all because it's been a little bit over three weeks, okay? It's been a little bit over three weeks. Trump is now ordering, as in summoning, federal government workers to go back to work without getting paid. Now, that's probably, you know, there's a lot of bleeps and stuff in there because we can't really air everything she said. But she was the, passionate. Yeah, that's what it was. The gist of what she said made sense, and it's what we're all thinking, really. And I'm sure those government workers that were going without pay were using those same words. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, Fox correspondent Tommy Loren had her own word to say, Basically, just to sum it up, she said, because Cardi B uh, spoke the way she spoke, we should not be listening to her for political advice. And because she dropped the twerk video. Right. Mm -hmm. She also dro dropped that uh, twerk video, which is a little bit of controversy with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a bit extra for my taste, but right on. <laughs> twerk it, sister. Right. Hey, twerk it. Out. Yes. Um, so, to which Cardi responded to Tommy with, I would dog walk you. Now, how do you feel about that? I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, I think that Tommy is trying to make herself, I mean, what she usually does into the victim, mm -hmm. you know, because she's like, well, if you look in the Urban Dictionary, first of all, nobody ever quotes the Urban Dictionary. No, you know? it's like, not a credible No course. one, you know, so we already <laughs> know that it's going downhill from there. She right. was like, this is like a disgusting thing to say to somebody. Look, I was just about to cuss. Look, <laughs> you are not the victim here, ma'am. The women and men who are and children who are affected by this government shutdown are the victims. Don't make this about you, baby. Right. And let's also talk about the simple fact that Cardi is bilingual. So, of course, you know, sometimes you're going to slip up or your English isn't as eloquent as you would like it to be because your brain is trying to process those two languages at one time. So, Tommy, how about you stop speaking racism, which is your predominant language, and get your life together? Boop. Right. And she's done. Yes. Hmm. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. Um, we put too much precedence on how people speak. Right. And not actually listen. We don't actually sit and listen to what they're saying. Exactly. Which is what's most important. Exactly. And people tend to think that because they have an accent or they speak with a certain dialect, even a southern mm -hmm. drawl. They tend to believe that they are not as smart. Exactly. And I'm like, your, your pronunciation, your colloquialism does mm -hmm. not determine your intelligence exactly you're still getting the message across you yeah. know and if you need to know what those words mean webster <laughs> not urban dictionary yes <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. And I'm pretty sure you heard because this has been going crazy on social media that Future was in his bitter baby father bag. Um, he recently did an interview with Beats One where he said that Russell was being controlled oh. by Sierra. Take a listen. He do exactly what she tell him to do. He not being a man in that position. Like he not being a man at that, at, at that point. Like you not being man, you not telling her, man, bro, chill out with that on the internet. Don't even talk to him. I'm your, I'm your husband. You better not even bring future name up. If that was me, he, she couldn't even bring his name up. She know that. She couldn't even bring her ex's name up. And I don't care what they gave you, what you don't bring their name up or interviews. Don't even do nothing around them. No, don't say nothing. It's about me. Whatever. I'm taking care of everything. I'm a thousand percent. Like I'm a, I'm a thousand percent. Like for like, I'm taking care of my She's situation. Street, I mean, uh, I don't know about anybody else, but to me, that sounded like a man who was scorned. Like yep. you literally thought that 
you know, after you broke up with Sierra, that was going to be her downfall. But mm-hmm. now she's moved on. She's found a man who is crazy about her. Right. Both of them have like complimented each other in ways that I didn't think were possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they have a family. He beautiful loves family. future son. Mm-hmm. They have a beautiful little girl mm-hmm. and they're living their best life. And then right. here you come. Right on. Because he messed up the relationship. You mad because you messed it up. Couldn't get what you wanted. Thought you was going to get her back because she you thought she was one of the basic ones. And she said, no, I'm worth more. And she moved on and got her God-given, wonderfully blessed marriage and children. And you have a problem with it because that you was are bitter. So bitter with that your millions you. of baby mamas out here. Man. Stop being a serial baby father. Worry about your children and getting your life together before you jump in on their relationship. Be right. happy for them. So, right. you know, Russell being the sweetheart that he is and the grown man that he is, clap it up for him. Yes. Um, he just was like, all that matters on his Instagram were his babies. And it showed, he showed a picture of the two of them doing like Eskimo kisses, which I thought yeah. was so cute. And such a man response. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not even going to get caught I'm up in the job. I'm not about you. I got what I wanted. You didn't get what you wanted. That's your fault. <laughs> and my woman is bad. Right. You know. Yeah, you <laughs> um, and you know now he's trying to renege. Of course. Of course. Because we all can see right through his statements, which he exactly. you saw he contradicted himself during his statements. So. Exactly. Yeah. Future, you're canceled. Right. Um, and then moving on, Aisha Curry. Yes. She's been trending because yeah. she came out with a statement that I really didn't see a problem with, but for whatever reason, everybody's but her. Mm-hmm. Um she was <laughs> she was saying that the reason why her relationship is doing so well uh, is because that she got the advice from both Stefan, uh, Stefan and her parents. And they both said that you have to keep your significant other um, first, you know, put them first before the children. People are mad. I don't understand why they're mad. Number one, they asked her personally how her marriage is so successful. Right. So she gave the answer of how her marriage is so successful. So it should not matter what you think about that. Secondly, the advice that your children do not come first in your marriage is, first of all, duh. Right. I mean, <laughs> duh. Like, that is the cornerstone of what you learn in marriage counseling, whether it's in the world or whether you go in a space based marriage counseling. It's the first thing you learn. Exactly. Your marriage is a triangle in a faith based triangle. You got God up here, you got your spouses on either side. And outside of that triangle is family, friends, right. ch- even the children that are produced from that marriage. They have no say. And you're married. Exactly. Because if the two of you can't get it together and can't leave the household, then guess what? The kids are going to be running around acting crazy. Exactly. And, and half it's just of y'all that that's mad ain't never been married. Ooh. Because y'all don't know. And that's why you're mad because you don't know. And I mean, it's. And the library is closed after yeah. that read, honey. Mm-hmm. If there's no relationship <laughs> to keep together, then they don't apply to you. I'm just saying. Hmm. I'm just saying. Hmm. Okay. Well, damn. I'm just saying. <laughs> Isn't that true? I mean, it's true. true. I'm single and I didn't see any problem with that. I've never been married, but I was always taught that, you know, look, happy wife, happy life. And then you have to keep the man happy. If the parents are happy, the kids are happy. The entire family is happy. Or even in a relationship. If you two are in a healthy relationship together and you have children, you put your relationship first. You make sure everything's good with the two of you and then the children shall follow. But if you let your kids have a say because you bitter and they talking about this and that in adult matters. Stop bringing kids into adult matters. How about that? Your kids are learning to deal with their hormones and their own emotions. They are not equipped to deal with yours. Mm. Let them be children. Mm. Yes. Well, damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you guys keep tuned. We got a lot more on the way. <laughs> and we're back. So, I don't know if you heard the news, but Gina Rodriguez from Jane the Virgin fame and other movies as well has made headlines about her anti, quote unquote, anti black statements. Um, So, it started last year when uh, it was announced that Black Panther would have a full black cast Mm -hmm. in the Marvel Universe, and everyone was so excited about that. Gina tweeted the following Marvel and DC are killing it in inclusion in women, but where are the Latinos? Asking for a friend, dot, dot, dot. To which Black Twitter promptly responded with, what the heck? (laughs) (laughs) They're like, we get what you're saying, but right right now is not the right time to say that. And especially with Marvel, including um, Zoe Saldana as a major character in that universe. Who represents both. Yeah. You know, and I mean, even when you think about Tessa Thompson, like mm-hmm. you said, um, well. you also have Zoe Saldana mm-hmm. and then Rosaria Dawson, mm-hmm. who was in Luke Cage. Yep. Like, girl, 
do your homework before you just go and get the tweeting. Are you saying it more from like the Latino aspect or are you saying it more from your point of view because you weren't casted? Yeah, that's you know? the question there. Um, so when she she was actually invited to Sway in the morning and you know, celebrities get in their feelings when they're on Sway. For Girl. whatever reason, Sway, we have people crying, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh. So she was on there and um, here, take a look at the clip. The backlash was devastating to say the least because... Because the black community was the only community I looked towards mm -hmm. growing up. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have many Latino shows, and uh, and the black community made me feel like I was I was seen. So uh, to get anti-black is saying that I'm anti-family. Mm -hmm. My father is dark-skinned; he's Afro-Latino, um, and my cousins are and. Puerto Ricans are African, Taino, and Spaniard, and it's in my blood. So that was really devastating to me. Um, and I know my heart. I know what I meant. So as you can see, she was a little upset, uh, say the least, by the statements that were made. Mm -hmm. But um, what do you think about that? Was she misunderstood? Was she misquoted? Uh, some people are not okay with her statement about her father being of dark skinned hue yeah uh, her father is not of the dark yeah. skinned hue traditionally like i would say i'm more of a dark skinned hue he's lighter than kim right so i don't Ooh. know where that <laughs> wait. Came from. wait wait a minute <laughs> you're beautiful skin but yeah I, I don't know i mean maybe she was trying to relate and that's why she said that i think she was and it just wasn't first of all the timing wasn't good mm -hmm. because you've had so much built up and so much against you at this point, like even with the whole interview during Smallfoot, when the interviewer was like, you know, Yara Shahidi, you are, you know, such an amazing role model for black women. And she literally cut everybody off and was like, no, she's a role model for all women. Don't all lives matter us. Yeah. And I think that's the problem that people are having because whenever somebody's having their moment, she jumps in and is like, well, what about Latinos? What about us? Blah, 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 blah. Like, girl. It's like, we know. Yes. But at one point yes. in time, you were able to pass when we were not. So that part. There's, there's that part. a lot. The colorism comes into play there. Exactly. And I don't know if you guys recently saw the uh, episode of Blackish where they covered colorism. Mm -hmm. They did an excellent job. I would say to watch that to kind of understand where a lot of this is coming mm -hmm. from. And we're back, guys. So we're getting ready to talk about a very, very touchy subject here. I mean, um, the surviving R. Kelly documentary just blew up all over. It's been, you know, the talk for on social media for a few weeks now. Um, and even some of the celebrities have decided to come out and discuss matters. Um, some of them have been extremely vocal. Some have decided to remain silent. And then, you know, there were some that have been reached out to for the documentary that decided to not be a part of it. Um, recently, the executive producer and Erica Badu have been going back and forth about it on Twitter simply because the exec executive producer was like, we wanted to reach out to you about a statement that you made during the Soul Train Awards. And we were wondering if you would like to come onto the documentary. And she said that Erica Badu said no. Mm. So Erica Badu, let's just start there. <laughs> Erica Badu has pissed off a lot of people. Why? Well, because of a comment that she made at the 2015 Soul Train Awards where she said, you know, he has done more for the black community than anybody that we know, which I was like, how? That part. he believed he could fly? That part. Okay. We'll get to that. Okay. Then uh, she decided to say recently uh, that, you know, in a concert, let's pray for him. Let's lift him up in prayer. You know, let's let's pray for our brother. And people weren't feeling that either because they're like, hold on. <laughs> after this documentary you still can say something like that like this is disgusting so needless to say as i said the executive producer you know reached out and said i've tried to contact erica badu and i wanted her to be a part of it and now erica badu is clapping back on twitter mm. essentially she's saying i was what was it i was not ever <laughs> I yeah, not ever double not negatives, ever. you know, yeah. I was ever contacted by anyone to be in the documentary. And she also said that her statements that she made during the 2015 Soul Train Awards was a joke. Um, she said she got it from a quote from a movie, but I still didn't see how it fit. Even mm -hmm. if it was a joke, I don't think anybody was in on the joke. Yeah, <laughs> it's 
one of those dry jokes when you're hosting something and it just doesn't go over so well. Yeah. You and do those sometimes too. Exactly. And it's just like, that didn't fit. And I mean, considering the background, because even before the documentary, we knew. Mm -hmm. We knew. Mm -hmm. You know, so let's let's not the, let's, act on, stupid. Alia, you know? Alia, we knew. We knew. The and whole... some people have even seen the videotape. Yeah, like, you guys knew. There's, there's no mistaking that this exactly. was an issue. And um, another thing is now Taraji. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't really know... I feel like maybe Taraji meant well, but it yeah. just wasn't it perceived that way. <laughs> because in her Instagram story, she was just basically saying like, you know, how is it that we are, you know, doing all this and there's documentaries for R. Kelly, but, and we have mute R. Kelly, the hashtag, but there's no mute Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. You know? And Black Twitter felt like, are you trying to pit the black man against the white man with the same evil? And it's like... No, they both need to be punished for what happened. They both need exactly. to be brought to justice. Um, I think what they were trying to clarify is that it says mute R. Kelly because R. Kelly is a musician. Right. So you would have to mute his music and not listen to it in right. order for him to feel it. And that's where that came from. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm not quite sure where she was going with that, you know, or why she even felt the need to put it out there. Yeah. I mean, she was trying to make a point and it just didn't. It, I mean, no. to be fair, she did come out on Twitter and say, hey, I never said he wasn't guilty and he doesn't need mm -hmm. to go to jail for this but what i'm you know it was one of those things that you know just sit down yeah you know because if you're not just going to say r kelly was wrong i'm going to stop listening to his music yeah. you know we all collectively need to come together and just you know stop supporting this man then don't try to compare yeah. you know don't try to compare because i mean it's not like you know, Harvey Weinstein doesn't didn't have court dates. It wasn't like people didn't press charges against him. It's not like he won't have documentaries that are in the works now right. that are getting ready to come out about him. And it's not like a lot of companies didn't pull out, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, it's just like, don't try to, just don't try to compare. Well, that's a wrap. We thank you guys for tuning in for this episode. What did you think about it, Kim? Absolutely loved it. And even though you were shady. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't call it shade. It's more honesty. You know, it just, no? Tomato, okay. tomato, girl. All right. <laughs> well, my intentions were pure. Yes, they were. They were. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're following us on all our social channels at in the Diva Zen TV. If you want to send us a shout out or you have any ideas, go feel free to email us at in the Diva Zen at gmail.com. And also make sure you look at our template in our Instagram highlights. We want to know a little bit about you. We've told you about ourselves and Tatiana, our producer, but we want to know about our fans as well. So make sure you copy that template and tag us in the Divas Den TV. Yeah. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>